I grew up in a very religious family because my family belonged to this um, influential sect in the Philippines. And I grew up believing that um, I was saved because that's what the religion taught us, that for as long as we are members of this church, we're saved. Because I believe that um, I was blessed simply because I followed everything that the church asked us to do. I fear the church more than God. I felt like I had a relationship with the church but not with God. There came a point in my life when everything was just spiraling down. Problems in the family surfaced, problems at work, etc. And that made me question, hold on, how, is there anything that I'm doing wrong? Maybe God is punishing me because I'm not converting my boyfriend. So we made a deal. So he attended. And then after he had so many questions, questions that I wasn't able to answer because I didn't read the Bible, he wasn't convinced. So it was my turn to fulfill the end of the bargain. First time that I went into a Christian church, um, we sat down, I was really angry, and I remember praying. I was praying, Lord, um, I pray na sana you will not let me be deceived. But little did I know that that exact same prayer will be answered by God. The message at that time was God's love. I was looking for love. I was actually very hungry for love. And now to hear about God's love, that's very foreign for me. And that was the start of it. So every Sunday, I would go to my old church and then I would go to CCF. My dad was a head deacon for 20 years. Sir, we were all part of the church choir. My youngest brother was studying to become a pastor. So super active family. And pag nalaman ng church, and from anyone from my family, kung ano yung ginagawa ko, which is attending CCF, attending Christian services, hindi lang ako yung maaalis, but their roles will also be jeopardized. So I kept it as a secret, and I really was determined to keep it that way. So I didn't know that the whole time there's this office mate who was actually observing me, and what he did was he reported like a full report about me saying that Yvette is now a member of CCF, that she actually attends Bible studies in the office, and that she attended a True Life retreat where she got baptized. And not only a written report, he also attached photos. Three months after my baptism, the head pastor called me, and then he asked, um, Kapatid, totoo ba na ikaw ay miyembro na ng CCF, ikaw ay nagpabautismo na, at ikaw ay nag a ng mga Bible studies. And at that time, I was so tempted to deny. Because if I deny, he wouldn't know. There's no way he can find out. But also, again, God was convicting me. Will you deny me now? Ngayon pa ba? So, even if I was so scared, I said, totoo po. And then he passed the phone to my dad, who was crying at that time, and was saying, Anak, bakit mo to ginawa? And then a week after, my dad called me and he said na he lost his role, he lost his position. And it was at that time that my family was really like against me and he, they, were, um, they were so disappointed that they asked me to leave the house and to never return again. And it was, it was then that I realized that, you know, um, it was when you reach a point in your life that you don't have anything or anyone. The people you love, the things that you hold on to. But all you have is God. That's, that's the best thing that can ever happen. And I remember not having anyone. It was so clear that God was with me for the first time. And I felt His love. I felt His presence. I felt his joy, I felt his peace, and I would never change it for anything else. So it was my lowest point, but it was also the best point of my life. It's the best decision that you can ever do to choose Christ more than anything else. Nothing in this world can ever satisfy you the same way Christ would satisfy you. No one will ever defend you the way Christ would, and no one can ever die for you the same way our Savior died for you.